yes he is The mission of the Ministry of Legal and Constitutional Affairs includes revising Jamaica's legal and constitutional infrastructure and accelerating the pace of reform. The time by the MLCA is 6 a.m. It's your girl Alicia Taylor represented for Jukal Daya Love in the Morning. <laughs> So come get inspired with two cold air. Love in the morning and love on our own. So come get inspired with two cold air. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, one and all. You're listening to Love 101, the family station. The number one gospel station in the nation. And you're now listening to Love in the Morning with me, your host, Jacal Dyer. Good morning. For those who are listening on the FM band, 101.1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Good morning to you. Those on our website, that is www.love101.org. Good morning, good morning. And to those who are on our app that you can download from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, type in Love 101 FM and you'll find our app right there, ready for you to download. You can take us on the go. also live right now on youtube and facebook that is love 101 fm jamaica don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms and that is where you can keep abreast of what's happening here at love so you can follow us turn on post notifications so that you can know exactly when a post is being made when a video is dropped when we you know when we're going live all that just ensure that you stay tuned and follow us on all social media platforms love 101 fm jamaica 
I'm your host, Jokal Dar, and I'll be with you till 9.30 today. It is a take-me-back kind of Thursday. So, I will be, you know, giving you your favorite songs from yesteryear, back in the day, back in from, you know, Azan. Come on, I mean, we're still young, you know, we're still 16, but we know the song them from around this, so yeah, Azan. So, today is that kind of day. It's Take Me Back Thursday. I have a lineup for you. Make sure that you are, you know, getting ready for that. It is Thursday, which means that it is Friday Eve. And tomorrow is Friday, so to God be the glory. We made it to another Thursday, don't it? Yeah, man. time it's now time for or morning coffee pick me up devotion also grab your bible your coffee your tea your syrupy your ginger whatever you're going to be having this morning and let's jump into our devotion today's topic is facade and our scripture reference comes to us from matthew 23 verse 27 <laughs> Matthew 23, verse 27 is where our scripture is coming from. And again, the topic for devotion is facade. All right. To those who are on their way to work, drive safe, take time, drive, obey the rules of the road, and make sure you get to work on time. All right. To those who are leaving out, just leaving out, you know, the old traffic steer school start back. All right. To ensure that you factor in the traffic when you are leaving out because you don't want to be caught unaware in that traffic because we, we know, we know how it gets especially on the roads when school starts. You understand? So, it's seven minutes past the hour of six, and we're going to jump straight into the morning coffee, pick-me-up devotion, and again, the scripture reference comes to us from Matthew 23, 27, and the topic is facade. Let's dive right in. facade matthew 23 verse 27 says woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you are like whitewashed tombs which outwardly appear beautiful but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness here in the portion of god's holy word we honor it by saying thanks be to god i don't know about you but that scripture comes to drip away by people that scripture is just rough. <laughs> uh, the, the devotion says, Honesty is more than the words we say. It's a posture of the heart. We weren't made to try and be something we're not. And he never asks us, God never asks us to keep up appearances. He longs for us to have the courage to be vulnerable. He longs for us to be so founded in his unconditional love that we live honestly. May you experience new levels of peace and joy this week as we discover God's heart for honesty. Now, the greatest testimony you could possibly give is to have the audacity to live honestly. 
it takes courage to be yourself it takes security in the unconditional love of your heavenly father to acknowledge just or to acknowledge not just your strengths and successes but also your weaknesses and your failures but in doing so your life will proclaim the powerful beautiful work of god and in doing so you will experience the peace and joy only freedom from building a facade can produce. A facade is an outward appearance that is maintained to conceal a less pleasant or creditable reality. So often to cover what we know to be imperfect, we devote ourselves to creating a false picture for others. We even devote so much energy to building a facade that we try and deceive ourselves. We yell at yourself. We muster up our pride and look only at what we've done well, all while ignoring what we need help with. As a result, we spend all our time living a life apart from reality. And to live apart from reality is to live apart from the grace and love of our ever-present holy real father so in matthew 23 verse 27 that's what we read earlier jesus passionately rebukes those who try and build facades woe to you scribes and pharisees you hypocrites for you are like whitewashed tombs which outwardly appear beautiful but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanliness god solely cares about the heart he's not worried about perception him couldn't care less he's not worried about status or societal acceptance he cares about what is real he knows that any energy spent devoted to building a facade is energy you can't devote to receiving help healing and grace for what's real and important he knows that all your efforts to be accepted aren't of value because the opinions of others are nothing in comparison to his unconditional love for you and he knows that ultimately all facades will be torn down and we will be seen and known by him for who we truly are god longs for you to live fully known and fully loved he longs for you to live out a revelation of his love and grace rather than striving for affection and acceptance by building up facades. Take time to experience his love and grace today. Assess your heart and tear down your walls. So to wrap up, may freedom burst forth in your life today as you proclaim the glory of God's grace by being who you really are. That's the end of our devotion for today. The topic was facade and the scripture came to us from matthew 23 verse 27 all right for those who are just joining us you missed our devotion but don't worry we're live on facebook and youtube so you can jump right back on the live stream scroll back a few minutes and you'll find it there or nugget of the day and by the way starting today uh i know most persons always you know they hear you know uh, you know you hear the nugget of the day and you want to find it where it is you want to know who said it you want to just have that nugget you have some time you know the nuggets just resonate with you so if that's you you can check my instagram and also love 101's instagram page at 6 15 every morning and you will find our nugget of the day posted there so you can share it with your friends and family you can post it on your page you can repost it wherever all right so jump on over to Instagram. My Instagram is JNA Dyer. And the Love 101 Instagram is Love 101 FM Jamaica. All right. So if you want to see those nuggets of the days, you want or, or nuggets of the day rather, and you want to, you know, keep them with you or just or just be reminded of what they say, go to my Instagram or go to Love's Instagram and you'll find them right there. All right. Today's nugget says every failure is a stepping stone on the path to greatness. Embrace them for they lead to your success. Every failure is a stepping stone on the path to greatness. So embrace them, for they lead to your success. Coming up next is Through the Bible with Love, and that is brought to us by the Open Bible Standard Churches of Jamaica. 
and they encourage us to read our Bibles each and every single day. Today's reading comes to us from Joshua 16. Time is now 6.15 and we invite you to listen to Through the Bible with Love, brought to you by the Open Bible Standard Churches of Jamaica. Today's reading comes to us from Joshua 16. The allotment for Joseph began at the Jordan, east of the springs of Jericho, and went up from there through the desert into the hill country of Bethel. It went on from Bethel, that is, Luz, crossed over to the territory of the Archites in Eteroth descended westward to the territory of the Japhletites as far as the region of Lower Beth Horon and on to Giza, ending at the Mediterranean Sea. So Manasseh and Ephraim, the descendants of Joseph, received their inheritance. This was the territory of Ephraim, according to its clans. The boundary of their inheritance went from Ataroth Adder in the east to Upper Beth Horon and continued to the Mediterranean Sea. From Mikmathath on the north, it curved eastward to Teonath Shiloh, passing by it to Genoa on the east. Then it went down from Genoa to Ataroth and Neira, touched Jericho, and came out at the Jordan. From Tapua, the border went west to the Cana Ravine and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the Ephraimites, according to its clans. It also included all the towns and their villages that were set aside for the Ephraimites within the inheritance of the Manassites. They did not dislodge the Canaanites living in Gezer. To this day, the Canaanites live among the people of Ephraim, but are required to do forced labor. Thank you for listening to our Bible reading for this time, which came to us from Joshua 16. Through the Bible with Love was brought to you by the Open Bible Standard Churches of Jamaica, and they encourage us to read our Bibles each and every single day. So if you check your Instagram right now, if you check the love Instagram and my Instagram, you will see our nuggets of the day posted there. Every failure is a stepping stone on the path to greatness. Embrace them for they lead to your success. All right. And that is our nugget of the day. I'm going to share it to my stories right now. And you can do, do the same to bless somebody else on your, you know, on your feed, on your timeline, wherever. All right. So coming up next, it's now 6.18 AM. So let's see what today is. Today is Global Day to End Child Sexual Abuse. April 11, it's time to raise awareness and take action against child sexual abuse on Global Day to End Child Sexual Abuse. This day was first observed in 2000 by the organization Stop It Now as a way to educate communities and individuals about this pressing issue. While it may not be a fun topic, it's an important one that needs our attention. And it also needs our efforts to protect children all around the world. So let's come together and make a difference on this day and every day moving forward. Today is Global Day to End Child Sexual Abuse. All right? Yeah. I want to subscribe to them thing they know. I deal with them abuse thing. No, I want to work with that A word. A word we deal with achievements. You understand? That is our portion this morning. Achievement. Achievements are our portion. Not, not abuse. I don't deal with abuse thing there. For those who are just joining us today, is acknowledged as Global Day to End Child Sexual Abuse. Yesterday was National Siblings Day, so I do hope that you took care of your siblings. Did I? Well, <laughs> bring them up the same way, I don't know.
So what are your plans for the day? What do you have on the on the agenda for today? If you have not made your to-do list as yet, ensure that you pull your notes out, pull out your pen and paper. If you're old school like me, well, I mean, I don't, I, I really don't use pen and paper. But yeah, if you have your notes up on your phone or wherever you write your notes, do a to-do list and ensure that you stick by it as best as possible you want you, you want to get things done right you know what this i go through the day i have a lot of god i never do a thing today so pull out your notes pull out your notepad your pen your pencil your ipad your laptop whatever you do your notes on and get a to-do list done and i bet you by the end of the day when you check that list and you realize oh, boy everything done you'll feel much better about it so coming up next is this one from tim bowman and faith city music this is their old uh combined all right so this is this definitely should be a good one this definitely should be a good one this one is from tim bowman and kira shared the old school hymns medley
Mine was quite I was 16 and started drinking beer. I soon moved on to hard liquor and drugs that clouded my judgment. In college, I discovered broadcasting and found my niche as a disc jockey, spinning records at a local radio station. Groupies would call, inviting me to their place after work, where we partied. And from radio, I moved on to disco clubs, where my job was to entertain the crowd and keep them drinking. The manager kept me supplied with drinks as well. I made so much money that I had two sports cars and lived in a luxury apartment where I bought an endless stream of girlfriends. And one night, I drank too much, got in a fight, and was fired. No problem. I managed to get a better offer with more money in Houston. Before I moved, though, my cousin told me to start going to church, that I'd find life easier. But I didn't listen because the disco life had me hooked. After a few years, however, the emptiness began to close in on me. So I went to church, hoping to ease the feeling of futility, and I left in tears, knowing I was lost. Still unwilling to give up the money and the perks, I went to church occasionally, but hardened my heart to the message of God's sacrifice for our sins. And then one afternoon, I fell on my face and cried out to God to help me. And that night, I attended a big evangelistic rally and didn't resist God's call. I, I laid down my sin-scarred life at the cross, and that night, I quit my job as well. I'm Ron Bronte. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. If you would like to be free from the weight of sin by receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, or maybe you have questions about it, call 1-888-NEED-HIM right now. Free Indeed is a production of Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Email unshackled at pgm.org. Time on Love 101 is now 6.30 a.m. And we now make way for the morning news. Today's news is sponsored by the Jamaica Customs Agency, Country Above Self. Importers, shipments requiring you to pay customs duties and taxes are cleared on a customs goods declaration known as an IM4 or IMS4. Ask your clearing agent to provide your customs declaration, customs assessment notice, and customs receipt once duties and taxes are paid. Where your clearing agent may not be able to provide the IM4 or IMS4, request your customs goods declaration registration number or C number, which can be used to verify your payments. Importers, request your IM4, IMS4, or C number. It is your right. For details, email the Jamaica Customs Agency at public.relations at jca.gov.jm. Jamaica Customs, keeping our customers in focus. In news this morning, NEPA developing framework to prevent future fires at Riverton City Dump. Opposition calls for more to be done to limit fires at Riverton Disposal Site. Western Jamaica told to brace for water restrictions as drought worsens. MPs and municipal corporations should be able to mobilize drought financial support by weekend. In regional news, Venezuela's ex-oil minister arrested in corruption probe. And in sport, Megan Tabo calls for more corporate support for track and field. Details after the break. <music> Are you ready for another exciting show in Zala Live? 1 p.m. to 4 30 p.m. This Thursday, Thursday, April 11. Well, Joy V, Sarah, and the Trophy One. For another time to recollect and reconnect. Stay tuned for the brain testing mental size at 1 45. Then prayer blasts will be at 2 o'clock as we ring in the prayer bells of heaven. Get with the inside pieces of the past. We share with you the history of Port Royal. So come on the journey with us as each and every Thursday we will be highlighting a place in Jamaica. Then I've 
with them. Join us for music overload in a take me back style. All this and more will come alive 1 p.m. before 30 p.m. This throwback Thursday, April 11, on the family station, Love 101. <laughs> Good morning. I am Jacqueline Dyer, and now the details. Newly appointed Chief Executive Officer of the National Environmental and Planning Agency, NEPO, Leonard Francis, says a framework is being developed to better assess and prevent fires from occurring at the Riverton City dump site in St. Andrew and other hot spots across the country. This is amid ongoing efforts to contain a blanket of smoke affecting sections of the corporate area after a fire broke out at the landfill on Tuesday. We are, as part of our long-term plan, looking on ways in which we can ensure that we do not have a continuous situation like this. What we have instructed the JS unit to do is that they should now identify all the hotspots within the country. They'll be gathering data on the various type of incident. We'll be looking on the time of day, the time of year, and the periods where these incidents actually occur. There are certain aspects that were developed. So what we are actually doing we know is putting everything in what we call an interactive GIS platform that will allow us to be more predictive and proactive. Leonard Francis, CEO of NEPA. Tuesday's fire at the Riverton Dump is the latest in a string of repeated fires spanning over two decades. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, is responsible for operations at the location. Mr. Francis says his team has been in dialogue with the NSWMA to address the issue regarding breaches of the environmental permit. In the meantime, opposition spokesperson on the local government, Natalie Nita Garvey, is calling for more to be done to limit the possibility of fires from spontaneous combustion at the Riverton disposal site. The call comes as firefighters and workers of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, worked tirelessly yesterday to contain the fire, which blanketed sections of the corporate area with smoke. In a statement on Wednesday afternoon, Mrs. Nita Garvey said the capital city cannot continue to absorb such levels of smoke inhalation yearly as it has major health and business implications. She said Kingston and St. Andrew, as well as Port Moore, had serious air quality issues on Tuesday and Wednesday, which particularly affected citizens with respiratory illnesses. Mrs. Nita Garvey said in the past, the NSWMA has given assurances of improved practices in its effort to convert the dump site into a sanitary landfill. She urged Minister of Local Government Desmond McKenzie to ensure the agencies provided with the necessary financial and technical resources to maintain the dump. Mrs. Nita Garvey also asked the minister to provide an update on plans announced by government some time ago to move the disposal facility to a new site, which would provide better conditions for waste disposal. And as the drought conditions affecting Jamaica worsen, the National Water Commission, NWC, is warning residents in western Jamaica to brace for water restrictions. Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Tuesday disclosed that severe drought has been affecting the western end of the island, especially Westmoreland and Hanover. He said millions of dollars has been allocated to assist affected communities. Speaking on local media on Wednesday, Wednesday morning, rather, Acting Communication Manager at the NWC, Delano Williams, said the Logwood water supply system, 
that serves communities in Hanover and Westmoreland is at 50% of its capacity, much worse than last year. He said the NWC is implementing measures to manage the water crisis. The acting communication manager added that the NWC will be increasing the trucking of water to the affected communities in the short term, as well as upgrading the Great River and Roaring River water systems as part of the long-term plan. Minister with Responsibility for Water, Senator Matthew Samuda, says members of parliament and municipal corporations should be able to mobilize drought support for their constituents by the end of this week. This comes after the Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced that an additional $150 million would be allocated towards drought mitigation efforts. Speaking at West Speaking at Wednesday's post-Cabinet media briefing at the office of the Prime Minister, Minister Matthew Samuda says the government is financially prepared for a possible lengthy drought this year. He says through proper management and a distribution of funds, the government is in a position to react accordingly. Minister Samuda says meetings are to be held with the country's drought management committee as early as this week. And Minister Samuda says the 150 million dollar emergency drought support allocation should be mobilized by the end of this week. The program will target the 50 constituencies assessed as most heavily affected. Kingston Wharves Limited KWL has resumed operations at Newport West. The company temporarily suspended its operations for about three hours yesterday due to the smoke nuisance and poor air quality caused by the fire at the Rivers and City Dump in Western St. Andrew. In a statement yesterday, KWL stated that it had suspended vessel and gate operations at its terminals in what it said was in the interest of the entity's team and customers. It also suspended services at all warehouses and motor vehicle operations at its Global Auto Logistics Center at Tintin Pen. But operations at all its facilities resumed just after midday following a reassessment of the situation. The resumption applied to vessel and gate operations on the terminal, services at all warehouses, and motor vehicle operations at its Global Auto Logistics Center at Tintin Pen. And residents of Vineyard in southwest St. Elizabeth are calling for the police to maintain their presence in the community in order to keep a lid on criminal activities. They are fearful that when the curfew imposed on Monday ends this evening, the shootings and murders will resume. The last incident was on March 28, when one man was shot and wounded after armed men carried out an attack at a shop. Prior to that, the St. Elizabeth Police said there have been several other cases of shootings which have caused tension between rival gangs. Love of Him News understands that residents were on edge as the curfew draws to an end. Despite this, he said a maintained police presence in the area can still make a positive difference. Along with crime, residents are complaining that the community is also faced with poor road conditions and water shortage. The St. Elizabeth Police, in the meantime, say their presence over the last two days in Vineyard has led to a reduction in criminal activities. Shift Commander Inspector Alphonse Gale said the curfew has limited the movement of criminals to carry out murders, shootings, and break-ins. In regional news, more than a year after he resigned from his post as Venezuela's oil minister, Tarek El Aysami has been arrested following accusations of corruption. El Aysami is accused of stealing from Venezuela's state oil company. Once a powerful ally of President Nicolas Maduro, the former oil minister has not been seen in public since his resignation in March 2023. On Tuesday, Attorney General Tarek shared photos sh showing the ex-minister being led away in handcuffs. A former economic minister and a businessman who had close ties to the Maduro government have also been detained. 
Mr. Sayab, who is an ally of President Maduro, announced the arrests in a news conference on Tuesday, but did not say when they had been carried out. There had been much speculation about El Aysami's whereabouts after the influential polit politician complete completely disappeared from public view last year. And in sport, Sprint Hurdles star Megan Tapo is urging more corporate entities to invest in supporting and developing track and field talent in Jamaica. The multiple times National 100 Meters Hurdles champion says there are scores of athletes who would emerge as stars and bring additional glory to Jamaica if they got more tangible support. Tapper is the first woman to win a 100 meters hurdles medal for Jamaica at the Marquee Olympic Games. Tapper, who was recently announced as a Sandals brand ambassador, says it's always an honor to represent Jamaica on the global stage. Thank you for listening to the morning news brought to you by the Jamaica Customs Agency, Country Above Self. <laughs> Jockey is on duty every Saturday inside Youth Connection. Don't miss the hype. Don't miss the tunes. Don't miss the excitement with your boy, DJ Rebirth. Saturdays at 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on the Family Station, Love 101. At 3 p.m., your DJ runs the gospel rhythm. Hot. Hot. Tune in at 4 p.m. for a time where we share a word to grow your mind. G-Y-M? Grow your mind? Jim. Get it? Grow your mind? And at 4.30 p.m., we share with you how young people are giving all their time and fulfilling their purpose inside Ministry in Action. We get a taste of poetry and spoken word inside Poetry and Praise. And you get to send us a WhatsApp message and request your favorite gospel song inside Gospel Faves at 5. All this and more every Saturday at 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. with your love jock, your boy, DJ Rebirth. It's all here on the Family Station. Love one You connection. Shoot the and then forget. He provide everything on five people we shot. Shoot the and then forget. Him alone the be a be a win with it. Shoot both. She can go with two shit. She can go. Come on, two shit can go. Come here to put in the work, but the moving slow. Come on, two shit can go. Good time and I took them up his body yard. Two shake and go. When we up in the gym, we have to stay healthy and fit. Grab a two shake and go. Shake and go with two shake. Packed with nine grams of protein, 24 key vitamins and minerals to keep you going. Grab a two shake and go. Remember, every dream where you are, remember everything where you plan. We take and bang everything possible with a little savings in your hand. Say, say, a plan. We be host by the land. Do up goals and dreams like a plan. Say, say, a plan. Living your best life and making memories is priceless. But saving little by little is what makes it affordable. 